Welcome to the Success in Africa podcast with Dr. Modupe, your weekly dose of leadership vitamins to make you successful in Africa. Hello and welcome to the Success in Africa podcast episode 33. My name is Dr. Modupe Taylor Pierce and I am a scholar and practitioner of leadership and organizational development. Simply put, I study what makes people successful. I have been studying this for three decades with a particular focus on people in Africa. And in this podcast, I will share stories, lessons, and insights about people having success in Africa. Why this podcast? Because I am sick and tired of Africa being the poorest continent in the world. We are blessed with the greatest resource, young people. Africa will soon have the largest number of working age people in the world. And when these people achieve success, watch out. Africa's wealth will be unparalleled. Why? Because I don't know too many Africans whose goal in life it is to die poor. You see, success in life is simply the achievement of a predetermined goal. Whether that goal is owning a house and a car or creating employment for a thousand people or transforming your country into a high-income, low-corruption country, this podcast has been created to help you to achieve it. So if you're serious about achieving success in Africa, I want you to subscribe to this channel. If you like this video after you've watched it, please click the like button. This podcast is brought to you courtesy of BCA Leadership, the largest leadership enhancement company in Africa. If you have questions that you want me to answer after watching this video, just log on to BCA Online, the link is on the screen, and post your questions there. That is where I will respond to your questions. Today we are continuing with our five-part series on great employees, the five C's of great employees. Those five C's are calling, character, culture, chemistry, and competence. Again, let me repeat them. Calling, character, culture, chemistry, and competence. In the past two weeks, we've explored two of them. First, we explored calling, and then we explored character. And there have been some amazing learnings that we've had from our review of the journeys of Dr. Deko Mohammed of Somalia and Mr. Martin Kalungu Banda of Zambia. If you missed any of these two episodes, that's uh, episode 31 and 32, I suggest that after you finish listening to this podcast, find last week's podcast or last two week's podcasts and listen to them as well. Today, we're going to be taking on the third of the five C's, and that is culture. Culture is usually defined as the norms, the ideas, or the behaviors of a group of people. In organizations, culture is viewed as the collection of values, expectations, and practices that guide and inform the actions of the organization's employees or associates. Every organization, every community, every company has a culture. No matter how big or small that organization, that community, or that company is. These, when we talk about the culture, these are the sets of written and unwritten rules that guide and influence the behavior of people inside that group. And when recruiting a new employee or a partner, it is important that the norms and the behaviors of the organization that the person is being recruited to join, those norms and behaviors need to be aligned with the norms and the values that the person herself or himself holds dear. You see, when these two things, the culture of the organization and the culture of the person, do not align, it can lead to suboptimal outcomes. Let me be clear when I say the culture of the person. I'm not talking about whether the person is black or African or belongs to a certain tribe, etc. It's the, co the collection of values, norms, and behaviors of that person. So 
we have to make sure when we are recruiting that the organization's norms and values align with the person's norms and values. Okay, to illustrate this, let me tell you about a passionate African by the name of Arikana Chiambori Kwao. Dr. Arikana Chiambori Kwao uh, may currently be described as a global citizen because of all the continents where she's traveled and she's influenced. But she grew up in a small village called Chivu in Zimbabwe, in the southern part of Africa, where she received her foundational education. She later emigrated to the United States and she received her tertiary education at Fisk University and at Mehari Medical College, where she graduated in 1986 with a medical degree. Her focus was on family medicine, but her real talent was in entrepreneurship. It didn't take long for Arikana's entrepreneurial tendencies to inspire her to open her own medical clinics, and she also invested in real estate. Uh, as a Zimbabwean married to a Ghanaian living in the United States, Dr. Arikana became passionate about the plight of Africans in Africa and the potential of the African diaspora to be a force for good in Africa. Her work as an activist was quickly noticed and she was invited to serve as the international chair of the African Union Diaspora Africa Forum Americas and later the African Union Africa Diaspora Health Initiative. In these roles, her work involved mobilizing African health professionals in the diaspora to assist with Africa's continental health crises. Today, Dr. Arikana serves as the founder and president of the Africa Diaspora Development Initiative, an organization that aims to bridge the divide between Africans in the diaspora and Africans in Africa in ways that go far beyond just the transfer of remittances or going on safari holidays. However, it is what happened to Dr. Arikana when she was tapped for a bigger role in the African Union and the United Nations that serves as a learning opportunity for anyone seeking to become successful in Africa. Let me tell you more about it. You see, in December 2016, Dr. Arikana was appointed by the African Union. She was appointed by the African Union as the African Union's permanent representative to the United Nations succeeding Dr. Amina Salum Ali as the AU-UN ambassador. Now, in that position, Dr. Arikana represented the African Union to the United Nations. The African Union is a continental body comprised of the 55 member states or African countries, and it exists to promote and achieve the social and economic development and integration of the African continent. The United Nations is an international organization comprised of 193 member states formed to maintain international peace and security, friendly relations among nations, promote social progress, better living standards, and human rights. Both organizations have similar organizational culture due in part to the fact that the African Union, which is supposed to be funded by member states, is instead largely funded by the United Nations and the European Union. The UN culture at the time of Dr. Arikana's appointment emphasized seniority, rank, professionalism, insularity, risk avoidance, and tight controls. You see, behaviors like thinking outside the box, outspokenness, and risk-taking were behaviors that were decidedly discouraged at both organizations. Right now, with the benefit of hindsight, it's probably easy to see how the appointment of an entrepreneurially-minded medical doctor who was a passionate advocate for Africans in Africa and in the diaspora in the position of being an ambassador representing one risk-averse organization to another risk-averse organization might not have been the ideal decision in terms of cultural alignment. 
The first hint that Dr. Arikana might not be a cultural fit was from her initial interviews when she was appointed. In one such interview with Al Jazeera, Dr. Arikana was asked about what may happen if aid from Western countries to African countries was reduced. Now, remember that the organization that Dr. Arikana was representing, that is the African Union, depended for its existence on aid from Western countries. Her answer was blunt. She said, assistance going into Africa from the diaspora is more than any aid. Africans can look after themselves. <laughs> Imagine that. The clash of cultures continued and came to a head in 2019 when Dr. Arikana spoke out publicly about the abuse of Africa's resources at the hands of Western colonial countries. She targeted France in particular as an egregious abuser and exploiter of Africa's resources, describing how France continues to levy fines and taxes on former colonies in Africa for its previous investment into Africa, how France continues to maintain a chokehold on African monetary policies and reserves, and how France enforces monopolistic rights on doing business in Francophone African countries through French companies that are given first right of refusal. Given the fact that this outspoken behavior was counter to the culture of the UN and the AU, and the fact that France is one of the six largest funders of the United Nations, it came as no surprise when Dr. Arikana was relieved of her position as the Africa Union United Nations Ambassador a few months later. The AU, as we call it, the African Union, it faced significant backlash from the public and many other Africans after Dr. Arikana was sacked. And as an organization, the AU learned an important lesson about the importance of cultural alignment when seeking to recruit new employees or representatives. Since her departure from the African Union, Dr. Arikana has found great success as the founder and president of the African Diaspora Development Initiative. She continues to inspire Africans in the diaspora to invest in Africa, not just with their money, but also with their time and their talent. And she builds bridges between Africans in Africa and Africans in the diaspora. She even lit a fire under me as a guest speaker at the 2022 Made in Africa Leadership Conference, sorry, 2021, when she challenged us to be more aggressive in taking bold actions to expand our influence in the world. And I can see why her values and behavioral norms simply did not align with those of her former colleagues at the AU and the UN. So what can we learn from the journey of Dr. Arikana? Well, we can learn that, you know, as Peter Drucker puts it, culture eats strategy for breakfast. The norms and behaviors of a group of people matter. They matter greatly. And they are usually a reflection of the head of that group, the leader of that group, and or the funder or breadwinner of that group. After all, in culture, the golden rule does apply. What is that rule? That is, he who makes the gold makes the rules. When recruiting others to join an organization, it is important that you as the founder or hiring manager look deeper to ensure that that person's norms and behaviors, ways of working will align with those of your organization. Without it, you may be setting yourself up for failure. But when that alignment exists, you have the foundations for a long and fruitful partnership which will lead you to having success in Africa. This brings us to the end of today's podcast. I hope you've learned something from 
the journey that we've taken you and the story of Dr. Arikana Chiambore Kwao. Next week, we're going to continue with our series on the five C's of a great employee to help you as you build your company or organization in Africa. Thank you so much for listening or watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and like the video. Tell your friends about it. Together, we can transform our beloved continent of Africa. I'll see you next week. Tomorrow belongs to those people who prepare for it today. See you next week.